Carvo. Hello. Thank you for joining me. How are you guys doing? 10 amazing facts about Australia. Top 10 archive. I like that. Um, I like this channel icon. Go check out top 10 archive. It'll put sunglasses on your brain. I think that's their tagline. All right, 10 amazing facts. Australia. Let's go. Yes. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. As we return to our trip around the globe, we're stopping in a rather revered country, one that many wish to see. As we digitally travel to the land down under, we're going- It is true, Australia is kind of like a, it's like a destination that a lot of people do um, hope to one day see, me included. We're going to meet 300 jolly surfers. We'll see what mom has got cooking for all your Wally siblings. Damn. We'll yabber about some boomers, and we promise there isn't- There's something funny to me about seeing kangaroos on the beach. A Buckley's chance you'll be disappointed. This video, as Australians would I don't know it, why. is the dinky D. Number 10, Australia's innovations. Many people likely don't hmm. associate Australia with innovations or really anything else. So they made Wi-Fi. Like kangaroos, but the country has been home to some great innovators. Some of the earliest inventors were Australia's aboriginal population who invented okay. the boomerang some 10,000 years ago. And I've still never thrown one successfully. I mean, is it really supposed to come back to you? Because in that one boomerang hunting video, it didn't even come back to the guy. Like, whatever. In the 20th century alone, Australian inventors were churning out products that we still use on a regular basis today, mm -hmm. such as notepads. Notepads? Figured by stationer J.A. Birchall. Dr. David Warren's... How do you invent the notepad? That is a legendary. Black box... You'd think that guy would be the richest man ever in the world. Light recorder and the power strip, originally developed by Peter Talbot. Other really? The power strip. The notable first include the first feature-length film, The Story of the Kelly Gang, the first refrigerator, and more low. <laughs> what? Locally used items like the didgeridoo, a wooden musical instrument. For the I mean, the didgeridoo is cool, and everybody loves the didgeridoo. It's like the real-life dubstep. <laughs> but the refrigerator? I didn't know that. Girls watching this, you know those Ugg boots you love so much? Yep, mm. that's right. Thank Australia the next time you slip them on. Number nine. I'm not thanking Australia for that. Famous Australians. Sure, we all know Heath Ledger, Jeffrey Rush. I'm surprised any kind of furry boot was invented in Australia. Kate Blanchett, Paul Hogan, Nicole Kidman, Hugh Jackman, and Mel Gibson as certified Australians. But there's more that hails from down under than great Hollywood talent. <laughs> 2000 Sydney Olympic winner, Kathy Freeman, who took gold in the 400. She did that in a really cool, she looked like a fish running through the talent. air somehow. 2000 Sydney like what the heck? Olympic winner. How is she, her strides are huge. Kathy Freeman, who took gold in the 400 meter run, did her country proud, as did 1973 Nobel Prize winner, Patrick White. Radios blast out tunes from the country's musical stars, Keith Urban, Kylie Minogue, and Olivia. How did I not know Keith Urban? Olivia Newton John was Australian. As our eyes are treated to works of art by artists such as Brett Whiteley, Pro Hart, and Norman Lindsay. Let's also not forget the stunning personality of Steve Irwin, who personified Australia for much of the world. Number eight, Australian Legend. cuisine. Don't let Outback Steakhouse fool you. Australia <laughs> I like Outback Steakhouse. Cuisine is far more interesting. <laughs> what is that? Thing than a blossoming tray of onions and steaks. In fact, for a restaurant that prides itself on its down under style, it's missing a well-known Australian staple, Vegemite. That's true. Outback Steakhouse, even though I, I mean, I like any steakhouse, but it's not. There's like no actual Australian theming. Beyond the yeasty food paste, in even the food. Indigenous and more traditional Australians are known to dine on the. You can't even order kangaroo. A witchetty grub, a wood eating larvae. Should an almond tasting insect not whet your appetite, maybe something sweeter like lamington or smokier like barbecued snags will hit the spot. Those crazy Aussies are also known for their love for meat pies, macadamia nuts, fantalis. Tim Tams, Wheat Fix, and Anzac Biscuits. Number seven, tourist attractions mm -hmm. in Australia. As you should and can expect with any country you've yet to travel to, 
Australia is home to quite an array of attractions and sites worth making the trip for. One of its more notable buildings is the Sydney Opera House, mm -hmm. a venue for concerts, yep. local theater, and so much more. The Dorito Chip House. History buffs may enjoy visiting the Shrine of Remembrance, which was built to commemorate and honor the 19,000 Victorians that perished during the First World War. 19,000? I didn't know it was that many. Thalassophobics are going to want to stay Damn. away from the Great Barrier Reef, but anyone with a keen interest in nature should get a kick out of this system of 2,900 reefs and 900 islands. Additional attractions include Port That's a lot to see, 900 islands. <laughs> Jackson, Blue Mountain, Tasmania, and the Great Ocean Road. I bet none of you have even seen all 900 islands. Number six, Australia's wildlife. We may have seen some of Australia's indigenous wildlife tucked safely within some cave, but there's nothing like seeing them in their natural habitat. Oh. Critters like the Tasmanian devil, a tiny creature Mel Blanc turned into a whirlwind of a beast, or the equally cute... I will say they don't actually look anything like the cartoon. Wombat. Which is kind of disappointing. We'd be doing a disservice to not name the expected animals like the kangaroo, koala, or baby-eating dingo. But we also don't want to leave out the tiny kookaburra <laughs> or the long-nosed fur seal found on the southern About the coast magpie. of Australia. There is, of course, the myriad of deadly creatures like the cone snail, cassowary, stonefish. Cassowaries are deadly? Just to name a few. Oh, and how did we forget the platypus, the beaver's ugly cousin? Or is the beaver the platypus's ugly cousin? Well, actually, according to experts, they aren't related at all, as the platypus is only related to one other animal in the rare monotreme family, the echidna. So, yeah, that hmm. joke didn't go as expected. Blame the riders. <laughs> Number five, Australian gold rush. The United States of America isn't the only country to have experienced a gold rush. During the 19th century, specifically... Yeah, I mean, I think it's still going on in Australia. Edward Hargrave stumbled across a small sort of. speck of gold near Bathurst. Post-discovery, Hargrave's dubbed the gold site Ophir, was named commissioner of the land, received a life pension, and inadvertently started a gold rush in Australia. By 1852, 370,000 immigrants landed in Australia in hopes of cashing in on the boom in mining. That's such a funny thing. It's almost like, I don't know. It's like the equivalent of today's meme stocks, like GameStop. Except back then you had to uproot your whole life and go move across the world to go try and cash in on the gold rush. As it usually is when money is involved, <laughs> Tensions rose between the miners and authorities over gold field licensing, leading 1,000 men proclaiming an oath at the Eureka Stockade to defend their rights and liberties. After intervention from Melbourne troops, 22 of the 1,000 were killed and Eureka was reclaimed. Hmm. Number four, Australian ballot. In 1856, the states of Victoria and South Australia introduced a new system of voting that many countries still utilize today dubbed the Australian ballot and later the secret ballot, this voting method made it possible for voters to be able to cast a ballot in privacy. That was you guys? <laughs> That's pretty important. So that you don't feel coerced or pressured while voting? So what did you guys do? You were the first ones to put up a wall? I mean, somebody had to be. Thank you. As the protection of the voters became a growing concern across the globe, the United States and parts of Europe adopted the Aussie means of voting. Traditionally, the means of privacy is a ballot box or booth of a specific dimension. The voters are given uniform cards okay. and a uniform means of marking said card. Oh, that's Modern smart. Modern voting methods have turned to electronic methods, which tend to be under constant scrutiny in the United States. Number th constant? I don't know about constant, but uh, for a while there, yeah, that was a whole thing. Three, Australian holidays. Despite being seemingly in its own world, the country of Australia and the people that devote themselves to it have experienced loss during some of the world's most trying times. To commemorate those that gave their lives during the First World War, which is the first major military action fought by both Australian and New Zealand forces, Aussies celebrate Anzac Day. Anzac Day specifically points towards hmm. the landing of Gallipoli on when April 25th, 1915. April 25th? Oh, I just missed it! During the battle on the peninsula, 
Australia saw a loss of 8,000 soldiers against the Turkish defenders, who wound up pushing Allied forces into a defeat. For both Australia and New Zealand, the battle molded a legendary image for the members of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. Number two, world records. When it comes to world records, Australia isn't exempt from these feats. This guy was doing push-ups sideways. Records. When it comes to world records, Australia. Holy crap! Australia isn't exempt from these feats. That's amazing. Even when it comes to comedic value. In December of 2015, some 320 Australians took to the waves, breaking the record no for way. most surfing Santas at one location. In most surfing Santas. Was, was it on Christmas? Most surfing Santas on Christmas? In November of 2015, David Richards broke... Because you really can't do that in very many places. ...a record for most bulbs on a Christmas tree by stringing 518,838 LED lights on a 22 meter or 72 foot tree in Canberra to raise Hopefully he didn't start a wildfire. ...raise money for families affected by sudden infant death syndrome. Oh. On March 28, 2008, Daredevil Robbie Madison broke the record for the longest motorcycle ramp jump at 106.98 meters or roughly Ooh. 351 feet at the crusty demon's night of world oh records God. at Calder Park Raceway in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. That's awesome. I'm not surprised you guys broke that record. Number one, the island of misfit boys. When you don't want someone in your presence, you find a way to banish them. In 1788, England did exactly- Isn't this like the plot to Pinocchio? Exactly that, by deporting approximately 763 convicts to Australia, oh. which was to act as a prison colony. Over 50,000 criminals in 60 years were brought to the land down under, but it was about more than rehabilitation. In fact, it was widely believed by England's upper class the criminals were defective, could not be rehabilitated, and simply needed to be separated from those that lacked such defects. In this colony, <laughs> prisoners were not kept behind bars, but conditions were grim. Sadistic volunteers from Great Britain oversaw prisoners, kept strict rules, and harsh punishments. Hmm. Do you have an idea for a future top 10 video? Let us know in the comments section below. <laughs> wow. I mean, the fact, I mean, that's got to be the most badass origin story to any civilization. Being a convict country. I mean, that's pretty badass. No matter how you cut it. So, there you go. Well, that was fun. Um, go put your sunglasses on your brain and check out Top 10 ar Archive. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're doing good. I hope I see you again tomorrow. Happy Arva. Go enjoy the weather if you want to. Goodbye.